Hello everyone! A very quick note from me. If you've been following our channel then you probably know that I usually do all of the video editing and Aladino does almost all of the boat work. Uh, but for this video, Aladino actually decided to try his hand at editing. So this is the first video on the Sailing Magic Carpet channel that Aladino has ever edited. I think he did an amazing job imparting an awful lot of information and I think it'll be a really good video for those of you who like to work on your own boats. So now I'm going to hand it over to Aladino. Hello everybody! I thank you all for watching the previous video which was all about replacing bunks in a teak deck and many of you have expressed interest in future teak maintenance videos so this one is specifically about the seams, about recalking our cockpit. I also apologize for this video being less entertaining than the usual videos. I was in charge of the rough editing to know what Maya is doing all the time and learn a little bit. She still uh, did the final cleanup, but it is still visible that it's very much different and drier. But bear with us, I think there still is a lot of very informative things in the video. I don't know what material was previously used to seal the teak in the cockpit, but especially after our season in the south it had suffered pretty severe damage and was almost melting away under the Italian sun. From far it appears to be okay, but as I zoom in bubbles are clearly visible and occasionally we had some of this black stuff on our pants. So it was clearly time to replace the old caulking and make sure we would have a properly sealed deck and that no damage would sprawl any further from leaks coming in. I start by scrubbing the decks clean. You could think that the decks will get sanded anyway, but I believe by starting with something clean you can achieve better results as everything is more visible. The initial step is to carefully cut the seam between the old caulking and the teak planks. If possible, follow the grain of the plank to avoid cutting into it. For this I use a sharp X-Acto knife, and I use both hands for better control. It is often hard to see what direction the grain goes, but I work slowly, and sometimes it's visible very well. And also, if you would cut into it, you can fix it with a little bit of epoxy and trying to glue it back together if there is a little strip which has come off. But the more careful you're on this step, the prettier the end result will be, and uh, the more longevity you give to your teak deck. Uh, if you do this not carefully and the uh, seams will not be perfectly parallel then that is very much visible to the eye and it's not equally pleasant so I pay special attention to this step. To remove the caulking which is now cut off but is still held really well in the groove I made my own customized tool and I used the number one flat screwdriver. I grinded it to the same width or less than the caulking grooves uh, which in my case were four millimeters. It depends how wide your planking is and to give a pleasant view to the eye the caulk is sized accordingly. So I don't have very wide planks and th therefore my caulking is four millimeters. Anyway back to the screwdriver. I leave one side flat and the other one rounded and the tip sharpened to use as a chisel. You could also make a tool made for pulling the seam out instead of pushing. In the boatyard we used the end of an old rasp which normally is within the wooden handle, curved and sharpened like a hook. Now that you've made your own tool you can push the old caulk out, holding it 45 degrees from the groove. I used the rounded side towards the bottom, not to get caught in the wood and damage it. After you've taken all the caulking out, you can use the same tool to clean the bottom of the seams. I hold it 90 degrees up and pull it along the bottom with the sharp edge towards myself. There are different ways to lay a teak deck. There is planking with a rebate. 
that basically means that there is a little step in the teak planking and as you lay them you can have the planks touch each other so it is easier to assemble as you put one planking right next to the other but the little step that is in there is what allows uh, for room for the caulk to be applied later on. So as I said this one is easier to assemble, it's quicker and less caulking is required but also it has shorter longevity because after sanding your teak down a few times and you've actually eliminated all the caulking you are just left with planking that touches plank and no more groove to have caulking within. To extend the life of my teak without having to redo the caulking again, I decided to cut off the rebate and therefore making the entire teak planking useful. For this I used an oscillating multi-tool with a wood cutting blade. I used my screwdriver again to get the cut off strips of wood out of the groove. I paid special attention again, the seams having to be as parallel as possible afterwards. The final preparation was sanding the grooves. I used tongue sticks and recommend the box on every boat, they are very versatile. You can use them as mixing sticks, you can make epoxy coves or you can use them for uh, Cicaflex seams, they are really handy. I was using 100 grit sandpaper and changing it very often. After that, vacuum, vacuum, vacuum. I also use a brush to get excess dirt and dust loose. So the teak is now ready for applying primer and Cicaflex, but I actually wait with that because I want to do some more prep on the cockpit combings. They will get a new coat of varnish. So I will send them now before I continue with the Cicaflex because there will be a final seam in between here and I want to apply that one when the varnish is sanded and yeah, not the other way around. So I'll go ahead and prep that. So after all this preparation, the next step depends which, co which caulking you, ch you would choose. I'm using Cicaflex and Cicaflex requires a primer. So applying the primer is next. I had bad quality tape I wanted to get rid of. So I went the extra step of taping the planks, but only for the application of Cica primer. Being liquid, it penetrates into the wood and you wouldn't want that visible on the horizontal planking nor would you want to sand down too much precious teak. I wanted to show you this cool technique for cutting the tape precisely where the planks end, in case you would also tape your teak. I'm using an X-Acto knife blade, which has some tape on it so I can pick it up easily, and by placing it over the tape where I want to cut, I pull the excess tape up, and voila! Sika primer is pretty aggressive stuff, so I recommend using gloves and a mask, and the thinnest brush for the application. After letting the primer dry for a while, I went ahead with the caulking. Here's a clip of me pinching the tip of the caulking compound nozzle to make it fit into the grooves. I also cut the tip off at a 45 degree angle. All right, I'm ready. Would you pass me a caulk tube, please? Are you right there? No, frying pan. Oh my gosh. Extra tip. If you warm the Sika tubes in some hot water, it makes application much easier as the Sika becomes more liquid and flows nicely. Thanks. It makes a difference. I know it does. Thanks. It's just really nice how thoughtful you are about every stage of this process, Miyamoto. There is many videos on caulking, so I'll keep this step short. I watch the flow, move slowly and make sure the gap is filled properly and you don't have air gaps. I only continue moving when I see the apparent overflow around the nozzle. So 
So I'm generally pretty well equipped on the boat. The only thing I didn't have now in this quarantine situation is a, a good quality caulking gun and uh, it's already showing signs. Um, it's being quite annoying because not only do I have to press pretty hard here, which on a more professional one um, they're pretty smooth. So you can just press once and the flow continues, like you don't need to continuously press. Um, here I have to put on constant pressure and then the whole thing here is bending. Usually you don't have you don't have this gap here. So yeah, I just hope it I hope it makes it through. Um, uh, to be able to finish, but as you can see it squeezes the tube out sideways So I'll I have to press here pretty hard and at the same time also over here Yeah, so that's really annoying um, as it requires a lot of uh, Concentration and now you have to concentrate on something more, but anyway, I will do it After applying the Sika, I went over the caulking with a spatula, pressing it down slightly. You still do want it to stand proud of about 1mm, but this will help filling the grooves 100%. And as it cures, Sika will shrink slightly. Here's an extra tip, Sikaflex is polyurethane based and it cures with help of moisture. To accelerate that process I filled a spraying bottle with water and got an even layer of mist on my caulking overnight and the next day. Luckily time didn't matter now, so I let it cure properly for a few days. And after that it was time to cut off the excess caulking with a chisel. But first I went ahead and sharpened them with 400 and 800 grit wet sandpaper. And now to cutting them. I hold the chisel slightly sideways and here you can see how nicely a sharp chisel cuts off the excess caulking. For this purpose the chisel is used to cut and if you get stuck I find the diagonal motion helps instead of just pushing with force. To finish off I went over the decks with my beloved Mirka orbital sander. I used 180 grit sandpaper to remove as little extra teak as possible, but anything from 120 grit to 180 would give you a nice result. Getting to the details now, uh, the teak looks pretty nice and the caulking too. So what I'm doing now is um, I'm sanding the edge slightly. I don't want it to be a big groove because otherwise when the lid is on uh, you can see a big gap. So I'm trying to keep it small but I'm cutting the edge a little bit because otherwise that's a hazard point to start ripping out fibers of the teak so if it's rounded instead that'd be nice to touch um, you cannot hurt yourself and you can uh, hurt the teak less so uh, after i'm going to sand the whole edge here and um, i'm going to varnish because water is always running through there and you want to protect the wood 
but I'm using varnish instead of paint because I still want to see what's going on in case there still would be um, yeah um, water coming in um, to keep an eye on it uh, yeah and then um, at the very end when everything is done I'll do the final seam over here and then once my package arrives I'll varnish the whole um, combing again So the final step, as I mentioned, will be the last seam that will um, create a cove um, between the deck and uh, co uh, cockpit combings. Uh, when you're using Sika, uh, Sika 290 DC Pro, then uh, I highly recommend using the primer, otherwise you might as well not use Sika. And um, how I set this up is um, I just use uh, whatever um, clean cans and I label them. One is acetone and that is just so I can use the same brush for the whole job. They don't cost a lot but um, yeah this whole refit is in quarantine situation so even better to apply all those tricks and make things last. And the other jar I labeled Sika Primer because um, I cannot work from this. This one I always seal. Um, unfortunately it has a pretty short shelf life so try to keep it closed um, as much as possible. I just pour the little amount I need into here. Uh, wear gloves. All this stuff is pretty irritating and I also recommend using a mask. So what I do right now is I apply the primer for the seam and also you might see that I taped uh, little um, parts where I had air bubbles that happens especially if you have an unfortunate cocking gun like I do right now uh, but yeah so let's go ahead and primer So this primer actually um, reminds me a bit of contact cement, uh, you know that there you have to wait until it is not tacky to the touch anymore and here it's pretty much the same, um, it's not sticky anymore so I go ahead, I continue and also I could continue um, whenever but within 24 hours but in my case I go ahead right now. And here's what I did to the caulking gun again. Um, I could do a whole video about um, fixing caulking guns. So yeah, next thing I will do is actually just get a get a proper one. They are quite expensive, but I've messed with so many and uh, I need a new one for almost every second job and it's actually really annoying. So now I'm trying to hold the caulking tube um, in place with these hose clamps. I also replaced this one, this is the old one, and I hope that the fresh Sika is still pooled in here. Um, but by just trying to make it go through I also risk breaking the gun. So I replaced the tip. I check, yes there is still an aperture. Um, unfortunately this stuff cures pretty quickly so you cannot put away a Sika tube and think of using it in a f within a few months. Sometimes you're lucky but uh, usually it's better to be quick with a job like this and use up all of, uh, all of the contents at the same time. Alright. Also for this job I will start with the very small hole for the little um, repairs on the small holes. Um, there it's actually nice to have a small one but afterwards I will use uh, these again to clip away a section and have, um, have it a little bit bigger to actually then do this cove here. 
All right, let's go. Try to peel the tape off now. So you just finished with the wooden stick? Yes, with the spatula. I'll do the top one first. My only concern is that there is a lot of material still on it, but we will see. And why do you take the tape off before using the soap? Um, I could use it before, but this Sika is so liquid that even like this it would look nice. And basically the thing is that if I do it now and there still is a little bit of Sika overlapping the tape, when I take the tape off um, it will not be a smooth edge anymore, so I have to do it twice. Mm. So then I just do it once after. And also I'm not too picky here now, because uh, one benefit of Sika is that you can varnish over it and that's actually what I want to do with this cove. When I varnish the cockpit combings I want to varnish over the seam also. Okay. Now just a few little um, tapes. And um, I won't even do the trick with the soap, I'm sorry, I can't show you, but uh, Sika, this one for the teak, uh, actually flows pretty nicely, especially in good temperature. So it flowed um, nicely and it's shiny and it looks good to me, so I will not go over with soapy water. But normally that's how you would smoothen it out if it is irregular and not nice. Alright, done! I've successfully finished this mission. Eventually, I'll also do the cockpit floors, but I didn't have enough material to tackle this one and they are in better shape, so it's not necessary right now. But I'm happy that the top is sealed, it's more important here. I don't want any water to leak into the cockpit combings from this side or also just the plywood that the teak is installed on. So, this is nice. and. It has an oiled appearance right now, but that's just because um, I have uh, wetted them out and uh, scrubbed them just to get rid of all the excess uh, dust and dirt from the project. So just to clean it out and enjoy it. I also might add that personally I'm not a fan on oils. Um, I do enjoy teak when it looks fresh a lot. But I also love it once it becomes grey and I always leave it in its natural state, so no oil on top. But I absolutely love it. Um, and now I continue on to other things. The cockpit combing still needs varnish, that is not done yet, and uh, tons of other projects. But this one can be seen as completed and I'm happy.